Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast live. And today we're going to be talking about a really powerful and I think uh, defining topic that I think can make or break your business. If you apply what you learn here, it can literally propel you to unlimited potential, possibility, and profits. And if you stay stuck in the mud of doing it the hard way, it'll keep you stuck. And so that is really what we're going to be talking about today is the easy way versus the hard way. The easy way versus the hard way. Building your business the easy way versus building your business the hard way. What is the difference? What's the difference that makes the difference? What's the distinguishing factors that allow you to do it the easy way versus the hard way? And how do you know if you're doing it the hard way? How can you diagnose whether you're indeed doing it the easy way or the hard way. That's what we're going to talk about today. So with that in mind, let me just ask a question to open up this conversation. What's the difference? If we could use one word to describe the difference between the easy way versus the hard way, what would that one word be? That's a good question, my friend. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> word that comes to mind for me is leverage. Leverage. What do you think about when you think of leverage? Well, for me, what I think about is trying to pull something out of, for example, a nail out of a board. I can do it the hard way by pulling it out or trying to pull it out with my bare hands, with my bare fingers. Chances are I'll get blisters or I'll break my skin or I'll just pull on that thing in vain because I just don't have enough leverage. You guys with me? On the flip side, if I had a tool like a crowbar, I could enact a whole lot less energy, a whole lot less effort, and get a much better, easier result. So leverage is about getting more results with less time, energy, money, and stress. Does that make sense, guys? And that is really the word I would describe to differentiate between doing it the hard way and doing it the easy way, leverage. It's all about getting more results with less time, energy, and money. So with that in mind, how do you know if you're doing it the hard way? How do you know if you're not enacting enough leverage? Well, obviously, you're gonna look at your bank account and notice it's not where you want it to be, so that's a given. But there are some other factors you're gonna to want to probe and dive deeper into to see if perhaps you're leaving money on the table, perhaps you're working longer and harder for the results you're getting. And you may not even realize how much money you're leaving on the table until you unpack these different components of your business. So the first area you wanna look at, which is often overlooked because it's in the realm of the metaphysical, the invisible, but it's exceedingly important and powerful and perhaps is 99.9% .9 of the equation. And that's your emotional state. So one of the things that can put the brakes on in your life, the brakes on in your business, that will slow you down faster than anything else is something called emotional suffering. Emotional suffering. What do I mean by that? Emotional suffering is when you're showing up to your business, you're showing up to your office, you're showing up to your work, and you're feeling perturbed, disturbed, frustrated, annoyed, stressed, overwhelmed. You're feeling inadequate, not enough. You've got fear of failure, fear of rejection, any of that stuff. It's yucky, it's icky. It feels bad just talking about it, doesn't it? It's not a good feeling. And that is like taking your bow. You can have all the best tools. You can have all the best resources. You could have your toolbox brimming with phenomenal, useful, effective tools. But if you got a leaky toolbox, you've got a problem because you're not going to enact effective leverage, are you? Similarly, if you're an archer, and you've got something called a bow, and you've got something called an arrow, and you've got something called a string on that bow. Well, you might have all the greatest tools. You might have all the best equipment. You might have your sights dialed right in. But if you have a loose string, you're not going to get effective leverage, are you? It's just going to be a flimsy launch to that arrow, is it not? Well, that's what happens when you show up with emotional suffering. When you're showing up 
and you're not feeling powerful and peaceful and poised and confident, you're showing up with a limp, loose bowstring. That's not going to serve you to your breakthrough. It's certainly not going to serve you to your greatness or your dreams, is it? So that's one area and perhaps the most important area that can cause you to work longer and harder for less is emotional suffering. And the real key distinction that allows you to have a breakthrough in that area is as your source of that emotional suffering, not your company, not your spouse. It's not the market. It's not the realtors. It's not anything but you because emotional suffering comes from your thoughts, your emotions, the meaning you're adding to the situation. Nothing has meaning inherently except the meaning we give it. And that meaning determines the emotion and the emotion determines the response and the response determines the results. And it's either an upward spiral of awesome, which is doing it the easy way, or it's a downward spiral of suck, doing it the hard way. And notice you're the genesis, you're the source of that. You determine whether you're showing up powerfully or you're showing up perturbed. You are the source. So the bad news is you're the source. The good news is you're the source. So that's the first speed bump that can cause you to put the brakes on and do whatever you're doing the hard way. You might have all the best resources. You can still fail. Why? Because you're causing voluntary emotional suffering upon yourself. So one of the areas that we help our clients with is really unlock and unleash the inner warrior or warrior S within so that no matter what you face, you show up powerful. No matter what perturbance or disturbance may have caused you suffering in the past, you all of a sudden show up so powerful, so resourceful, so committed, nothing can stop you. You're like a hot knife through butter. Ain't nothing stopping you. How awesome would that be? That's called doing it the easy way, not doing it the hard way. Wouldn't you agree? So that's one area to look at. The other area to look at is leaving dollars in your database. If you've been in the business for any period of time, there is literal gold just sitting there waiting to be mined in your own database of prospects, clients, and referral partners, specifically realtors. If you want to look at the highest leverage referral partner source, it would be top performing, top producing realtors. And often the database is neglected in the name of now money, in the name of hunting and killing for a sale now, as opposed to cultivating and nurturing a database that will feed you for years to come. Both are important. Now money is important, but also having a renewable, consistent, sustainable, sustainable stream of repeat and referral business from that database. If you want to have a real business that sets you free, if you want to have a real business that you can sell with a portfolio and systems that help you monetize that portfolio and maximize the value of that resource and maximize the leverage that you're able to enact to monetize it, it's mission critical that you have systems in place for that. Well, Dorn, how do I know if I'm leaving money on the table? Good question. I'm glad you asked. How you know is if, number one, you don't have effective systems in place to monetize it, but more importantly, look at the fruit you're getting. Because if you have 100 or more past clients, you should be getting two to three repeat and referral transactions for every 100 past clients. And you should be getting two to three deals a month in the form of repeat and referral business from your clients and your realtor partners for every 100 past clients you have in your database. Think about that for a moment. If you have 100 past clients right now or more, and you're not getting at least one, two, or three closings per month for every 100 past clients, you're leaving a shit ton of money on the table. I'll tell you that right now. Do the math on it. How much do you make per deal? How much are you falling short? That'll give you an idea of how much money you're leaving on the table. That's easy money. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. It's right in your own database. It's right under your nose, just sitting there waiting to be mined. So doing it the hard way is neglecting that opportunity, ignoring and neglecting your past client database, or maybe you're doing something with your past client database, but you're sending them cookie cutter crap from your company CRM that's snoring boring, that's Dullsville dry, that people just delete or ignore because it's just boring. It's cookie cutter crap. 
Who wants that? That's not going in, to in, embody or elicit trust. That's not going to elicit a position where you become the irreplaceable, indispensable, and only logical choice. That just elicits you're just a cookie cutter loan officer. Who wants to work with a cookie cutter loan officer? Well, I'm telling you right now, if that's what you're relying on for your database marketing, just stock crap from your company CRM, that's exactly the kind of positioning that you're creating for yourself right now. And you wonder why you're not getting as much business as you'd like. Wonder no longer. It's called doing it the hard way as opposed to doing it the easy way with effective systems and campaigns that truly ignite, inspire, entertain, educate your database of prospects, clients, and realtors such that you become the only logical choice. So part of doing it the hard way is having a lackluster, anemic, or non-existent database marketing. The third way to discern whether you're doing it the hard way versus the easy way is crap conversion on your leads. You might be getting leads, but you might be leaving a lot of money on the table due to a slow speed to lead, which means you're getting the lead, but you're not responding to them quickly. You're letting them get cold. The longer you leave it and the longer you give them to cool off, the lower your conversion rate. So you may have a slow or sluggish speed to lead, and that'll drop your conversion. That'll drop your leverage as it relates to converting leads into closings. You might be great at following up. You, may be, you might be great at speed to lead. That may not be your problem at all. Maybe your problem is that you're trying to qualify them through text and email instead of qualifying them on the phone. If you don't qualify them on the phone and you're trying to do all the qualifying through text or email, you're going to leave a lot of money on the table. Why? because it doesn't elicit trust. How you convert someone is over the phone or in person, but typically over the phone where you're able to guide them. They can hear your voice. They can hear your confidence. They can hear how you show up powerfully with a heart to serve. It elicits trust. It elicits rapport. They're connecting with you as their trusted advisor. You can't do that through text or email nearly as powerfully. Wouldn't you agree? So, one of the ways you may be doing it harder as opposed to easier and leaving a lot of money on the table is your lack of salesmanship or saleswomanship when it comes to converting those leads. So one of the most effective ways to give yourself an instant pay raise, just get better at selling. Get better at education-based consultative, consultative selling where you're able to elicit that trust and be able to be that merchant of certainty where when they talk to you, they're like, there's no guessing. There's no wondering. They don't hope that you're going to get them the best mortgage. They know. Why? Because you know. There's always going to be a sale made. They're either going to sell you on their objections and excuses and rationalizations on why they should do it elsewhere or why they should do it later or why they should procrastinate, or you're going to sell them on the best solution for them with their best interest in mind. You're going to sell them on your solution because you bring total certainty. So conversion, another piece could be you don't have automated systems for following up by text, email, and voicemail and live calling to be able to hit them from multiple different approaches, multiple different media types, and to be able to touch them multiple times. Most people aren't going to buy on the first kick at the can. Oftentimes, you're going to have to touch them six, seven, eight, nine, ten times before they actually engage with you. Do you have an automated system for that? If you don't, you're leaving money on the table. You're doing it the hard way, not the easy way, the hard way. So that's another thing to consider is your conversion. Are you doing it the hard way when it comes to converting the leads you're getting? If you are, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. The fourth thing to look at is if you're reaching out to realtors and you're setting appointments and you're having meetings and you're paying for coffee and you're paying for lunch and you're paying for dinner and you're making a lot of friends, but you're not getting solid partnerships where they make you their exclusive. That's called doing it the hard way. So if you notice you're in a lot of activity as it relates to eliciting and cultivating relationships with realtors, but they're not, act not actually culminating into solid partnerships, exclusive partnerships where they send you all their business all the time and make you their exclusive, you, my friend, are doing it the hard way. Because as you've probably noticed by now, you can't go to the bank to pay your mortgage with emotional or relational equity. <laughs> that ain't going to cut it, is it? You actually need deals in the pipeline that close and money in your bank, period.
right? Where does that come from? It comes from solid, committed, loyal, exclusive partnerships, period. You don't want to be their last resort referral partner. You want to be their on speed dial referral partner where they got you on speed dial. Wouldn't you agree? And that is inextricably linked with your value proposition or lack thereof. So part of doing it the hard way as opposed to the easy way is a lack of a compelling, unique, killer value proposition that makes you stand up from the pack, that makes you the only logical choice. If you don't have that, I guarantee you, my friend, you're doing it the hard way. And chances are you already know it. You know it and I know it. So that's another area of leakage where you're leaking leverage and it's going to cost you and you working longer and harder for less. That's no fun. We got to find a way, my friends, to work smart, not just work hard, to do it the easy way as opposed to just the hard way. Wouldn't you agree? So that's the fourth thing. Now, the fifth thing to look at is being busy as opposed to being productive. So that's really leveraging your time. You know, there are so many different ways to be distracted, aren't there? We're being distracted by text message, by private message on Facebook. We're scrolling through our Facebook feed a million times a day. We've got people barging to our office, talking about this and that and the other. All kinds of interruptions, derailments, and distractions. And for the most part, we are welcoming it by not putting up guardrails, not putting up a barrier, a wall to defend ourselves from all of these distractions. We, in fact, I think in many cases, subconsciously welcome it because that focus, that diligent balls to the wall, blinders on focus, there's a lot of pressure in that. In the moment, it's like we get addicted to being distracted because it relieves this pressure of wanting to be entertained, wanting to do something fun, wanting to do something easy, wanting to release this pressure because when you focus on high income, high value activities, there's a certain amount of discomfort for the most part. Like calling realtors, there's a certain amount of discomfort in that, even if you have a kick-ass value proposition. If you're working on your CRM, there's a certain amount of discomfort, especially if you're a technophobe and you don't like technology. Usually the highest value activities where you're working on your business, not just in your business, they tend to be relatively uncomfortable. Have you noticed? So subconsciously, we tend to look for and welcome distraction. And that's doing it the hard way. Because if we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to the in- inevitable and incessant derailments and distractions in a given day or a given hour, then we're literally saying yes to doing it the hard way. We're seeing we're saying yes to leaking leverage with our focused high value activities. We're hemorrhaging productivity, we're hemorrhaging power, we're hemorrhaging focus, and we end up being quote unquote busy, but not productive. You stack that day upon day, week upon week, month upon month, and then you look at the pipeline and we wonder, Why didn't I make more money? Why don't I have any more closings? Well, notice all the different leakage points for leverage in everything I've talked about so far, let alone just the distraction of Facebook or the distraction of uh, unscheduled appointments or unscheduled calls. Next thing you know, you've literally hemorrhaged yourself to death with not one, but a million little razor slices, not one big gash with a chainsaw. We've literally hemorrhaged ourselves to death in our productivity with a million and one little laser, little laser narrow uh, razor slices, just one little slice at a time, leaking productivity, leaking focus, leaking power to produce. That's called doing it the hard way. We've got to put guardrails in place. We've got to enact discipline to focus on high value activities. All the top producers, this is what they do. There's nothing exotic or sexy about it. They're just balls to the wall, absolutely committed, focused like a dog on a bone to do those high value activities come hell or high water. They can miss a meal, but they don't miss that. Why? Because they understand that's the heartbeat. That's the lifeblood of their business. You guys with me on that? I know that none of this is necessarily groundbreaking stuff, is it? But this is the stuff that makes up the difference between the top producer and the mediocre majority. 
just these little things stacking up. The cumulative effect is a massive difference in destiny, a massive difference in outcome. Maybe not in a day, but if you stack these different distinctions, day upon day, week upon week, month upon month, a whole different life, a whole different legacy, a whole different direction, a whole different destiny. It's all about the little things, friends. Anyone that says you don't sweat the small stuff, bullshit. Sweat the small stuff. It's the small stuff that makes the difference. It's the little hinges that swing open the big doors to the big breakthroughs. It's the little stuff that counts. The sixth thing to consider when it comes to the distinction between doing it the hard way and doing it the easy way is just looking at your trajectory. Are you in a growth pattern or are you in a stagnation or a regression pattern? Just look at the fruit. If you want to look at the health of the root, just look at the fruit. Is the fruit growing? Is it sweeter and more abundant month upon month, year upon year? If it's not, you're doing it the hard way. Because if you're doing it the smart way, the way I teach my clients how to do, you're consistently growing. You're consistently getting better and stronger. You're consistently building momentum. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the place of fulfillment, is it not? Is in progress, not stagnation, not regression. If you're not moving forward, you're going backwards. There's no in between. Wouldn't you agree? So look at your trajectory. If your trajectory is stagnation or regression, or if you have growth, but it's little itty bitty incremental improvement growth instead of consistent, stable, and reliable exponential growth, or at least a healthy growth curve where you got double digit growth, you're doing it the hard way. You're leaving, you're leaving money on the table. You're leaking leverage, like we talked about earlier. And the last thing to look at to d- discern and determine whether you're doing it the hard way versus the easy way is my uh, contacts <laughs> went a little blurry. So I'm going to have to look at my screen a little closer so I can actually read my notes. Okay, there it is. <laughs> this is one of the downsides to having contacts. I can get my eyes fixed because... Um, on Facebook Live, I don't have the time to be messing around with my eyeballs, you know, pushing my contacts around. So, <laughs> so we get the spontaneity of uh, trying to squint and look at the screen to figure out what the hell I wrote. So the seventh thing that is an area to look at to discern whether you're working smart versus hard, whether you're working and doing it the easy way versus the hard way, is how much time you're allocating daily and weekly to working on your business, not just in your business. If you're mostly working in the business and you're a technician in a quote unquote practice, you don't have a true business. You're a guinea pig on a guinea pig wheel trading time for money on the time for money treadmill. That's not a real business. That's a practice. Let's call a spade a spade. That's a practice. If you want a real business, a real business that sets you free, a real business that allows you to be lucrative and profitable when you're on vacation. So you can be sitting on the, you know, on the beach or you can be sitting poolside, sipping a Mai Tai in your you know, swim trunks while you're getting paid, while your business is running like a finely oiled machine, hanging with your family, doing what you love and your business is running without you, that's when you have a real business. And if you want that, you cannot cannot afford to treat it like a practice and just work in your business, being the chief cook and bottle washer, wearing all the hats, being the technician. You can't build a true business that sets you free, consistently operating as a technician, stirring pots all day. That ain't gonna get you there. You have to start working like an entrepreneur and work on your business instead of just in your business. And you have to actually set up systems, policy, procedure, protocol, and team to allow you to build a business that works when you're not working. So if you are consistently and primarily working in your business as a technician, you, my friend, are doing it the hard way. And if you're cool with that, that's cool. But if you want to build a true business that that sets you free, if you want to make half a million or a million plus a year and be able to take six, seven, eight, 10 weeks off a year and have your business thriving in your absence, then obviously that ain't going to get you there simply working in your business, is it? That's doing it the hard way, not the easy way. So again, one of the things we teach our clients how to do in our coaching programs and our marketing programs is teach you how to set up systems that work while you're not working. So the leads keep flowing in, the repeat and referral business keeps flowing in, and you have systems to monetize your database. You have systems to continually drum up more quality leads that actually convert. And you can be like that hot knife through butter. Why work longer and harder for less if you don't have to, 
right? There's no brownie points at the bank for working longer and harder for your money when you go to withdraw cash from the ATM, is there? No brownie points for that. So why not find a way to work smarter as opposed to just harder? You guys with me? So with that in mind, if you guys would like to learn more, if you're listening to this or watching this and you're like, man, Doran, I'm leaking a lot of leverage in my business. I'm leaving money on the table in my database. I'm chasing realtors. They're not giving me the time of day. I have a weak or non-existent value proposition. I'm making friends, but I'm not making uh, true, solid, exclusive partners. I'm showing up to the office. I'm kind of stressed out. I'm not really myself. I'm not showing up powerfully like I need to. Um, I'm not converting as many of my leads as I should because I'm too busy working in the business instead of on the business. I don't have systems that automate the process. So I know my speed to lead is hurting, which is hurting my conversion. I know I'm leaving money on the table on all these different areas and facets of my business. I'm working way too much in my business, not on my business. This has got to stop. I got to find a way to work smarter, not harder, Lauren. Well, if that's you, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough one-on-one strategy session with myself or one of my consultants where we will lift up the hood and show you, first of all, we'll uncover and look at what you're doing now. Where do you want to be in the next 12 months, in the next 24 months? And what's holding you back from getting there? And how can we obliterate the constraints that have been thwarting your progress and how to give you a custom tailored prescription to help you create that breakthrough? If we can help you do that, by all means, we will show you how. If we can't, we'll steer you in the right direction with something else or someone else. Either way, you're going to leave with massive value, massive clarity. We're going to have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you and you'd like to get more clarity on how to bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be, reach out to us. Book yourself into our calendar at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys. So thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Again, the biggest gap in life, friends, is the gap between that which we know and that which we do. So don't just listen to this. Take it in, metabolize it, and discern, okay, what am I going to do with this? Maybe it's to just get on the phone with us. Maybe that's your next step. Or maybe your other step is to start to make a list of some of the things you need to change in your business, some areas where you're hemorrhaging opportunity and you're hemorrhaging leverage. But sit down and get clarity. Do something to take this message and have it materialize with breakthrough results in your life. That's what I want for you. That's what you want for you, but you got to take action. All right, guys, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. This is Doran Aldana from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Thanks for hanging with me. You make it a great day. Peace.